Aloha and welcome. I'm Pastor Keith Walter from Christ Lutheran Church in Mililani. And on this Reformation weekend, when we remember our Lutheran identity, I want to share with you the story of the accidental founder of our denomination, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther from 500 years ago. Let me just share the story. I got this... Uh, Years ago, I've been telling this for years, I got it from a, a book called Speaking in Stories by Pastor Bill White. Uh, it's sort of changed over the years as I tell it. It doesn't always come out the same. Uh, but uh, this is the story. Nearly 500 years ago, though there were many countries in what we now call Europe, there was only one church. There was only one political leader for all practical purposes as well, who ruled over Europe, or much of it, or tried to. This ruler was not only the head of the government, but he was also in charge of the church, and he was called the Pope. The Pope lived in Italy, hundreds of miles to the north. In a country that we now call Germany, there was a law student who was headed home one night when a great storm arose. Lightning filled the sky, and a fierce wind blew down branches at his feet. In great fear, the student cried out, St. Anne, save me! I will become a monk! He survived. He was saved. And true to his word, he became a monk. Living in a monastery, he spent his time performing simple tasks and attending worship five to seven times a day. Who was this young law student turned monk? He was Martin Luther. And though he was very bright and he worked very hard at his vocation, Martin was rather unsettled. He fasted up to three days a week, slept without a blanket in freezing weather, and went to confession several times each day, all in an attempt to please God. Martin, you see, believed that God was very good and that we humans are very, very evil. It followed then that God must be very, very angry with us for being so evil. During his lifetime, the most popular religious picture displayed Christ as the judge, sitting on a rainbow of all things, a sword in one hand and a lily in the other. Below, people were being pulled by their hair into the flames of hell by demons. It's no wonder Luther was so unsettled. When nothing he did seemed to help, Luther turned to the saints. Maybe they could help. It was widely believed that the saints of God had been so good that they had accumulated a surplus of a treasury, you might say, of goodness that was available for others. First, Martin looked to the Virgin Mary and her mother, St. Anne, the patron saint of Germany, the one he had prayed to originally, St. Anne, save me, I will become a monk. They seemed to offer no assurance. Later, he was to discover that no human has extra goodness to give anyone else. He discovered that God alone can grant forgiveness. And, Luther discovered, God does. As he read the letters of Paul in the New Testament, he heard the words, the just shall live by grace alone, through faith alone. Sola gratia, sola fida, in Latin. 
And as we often add, sola Christa, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Trust God, they seem to say, and his love will come to you. His love comes to you and creates the trust. We need not fret about pleasing God. God forgives us and loves us as we are. That is the story of the cross of Jesus. He dies because he loves us just as we are. When Luther made this discovery, aha, he was living in Saxony, in the city of Wittenberg. Now, one day, a man by the name of Tetzel came to town to sell indulgences. But I'm getting a little ahead of my story. Albert of Brandenburg wanted to be a bishop. Actually, he was already a bishop of two other areas, but he desired to be a bishop of a third. The Pope was willing to make Albert bishop if Albert would give him 12,000 ducats, 12,000 pieces of gold. A thousand pieces, said His Holiness, for each of the 12 disciples. Albert countered, a more reasonable figure would be 7,000 ducats, 1,000 for each of the seven deadly sins. They settled on 10,000 gold pieces, 1,000 gold pieces for each of the Ten Commandments. Problem was, Albert didn't have 10,000 ducats. The solution the Pope offered was to give Albert permission to sell indulgences. And this is important. Indulgences are pieces of paper that said your sins, or the sins of your loved ones who had already predeceased you, were forgiven. Buy an indulgence, and you were certain to go to heaven. Now, when Tetzel arrived in Wittenberg, where Luther was both a teacher and a pastor, pastor of the cathedral church, the drama began. Luther was irate. Privately, he ranted, you can't do things like this. Money cannot buy the forgiveness of sins. On the eve of All Saints' Day, all Hallow's Eve, or as we call it, Halloween. Luther marched to the Wittenberg Cathedral door, and there on that door, a door that served as the first internet, you might say, a community bulletin board, he nailed 95 theses, that is, 95 arguments or propositions for academic debate. People quickly copied the theses down and ran them off on a new device called a printing press. And we go from cathedral doors to printing presses to, well, you know. And you know what? With that printing press, the 95 theses were soon all over Germany and then spreading throughout Europe. The initial reaction was predictable. Albert was angry and the Pope was furious. Luther's purpose in posting these theses was to gain the opportunity to in debate the indulgence issue. He soon got his wish with the finest debater in the church, Johann Eck. During the debate, Luther's opponent appealed to the authority of the Pope. I am right, said Eck, because the Pope says so. Luther shouted back, then the Pope is wrong. He is human and he can make mistakes. Only the word of God, only the Bible can be trusted in matters of faith. Though the leaders of the church were clearly shocked at his remarks, 
because you just don't say things like that about the Pope. Luther quickly became a hero all over Germany. Some admired him simply because he was a peasant German priest standing up to an elite Italian Pope. Others were tired of German money going out of the country, while others simply believed that his calls for reform of the church were greatly overdue. And finally, many understood the overwhelming grace of God that came now, as always, through the cross of Christ. A few years later, in 1521, in the city of Worms, at the Diet of Worms, Luther was ordered by his church to recant, to take back what he had said and all that he had written or be banned from the church. And he answered in words now that are very famous. My conscience is captive to the word of God. I will not take back anything, for to do so is to go against conscience, and that is neither safe nor sane. Therefore, I cannot, I will not recant. God help me, I can do nothing else. Here I stand. Amen. They expelled Luther from the church making him a criminal. Anyone was free to kill him and in doing so become a hero. On his way home from the trial, he was kidnapped by a group of hooded men on horseback. Most people believed he had been killed. The men, however, were friendly. They had come to make certain that Luther was safe. They took him to the Wartburg Castle to live until things settled down. While he lived at the Wartburg, Martin translated the Bible into German for the first time. Now, Martin Luther had no desire to split the church, but it did split. He had always hoped that the church would change, reform. People thus called this period of time the Reformation. And those who followed him, who, who protested against the errors of the church, were called Protestants or Protestants. During the early years following Luther's excommunication, changes did take place. Worship changed from Latin into German, and a great emphasis on congregational singing developed using German folk tunes. The sacraments were reduced from seven to two, baptism and Holy Communion. And people at communion were allowed to have both bread and wine rather than just the bread. Throughout the rest of his life, Luther wrote hymns, teaching materials such as the small catechism, and in general shaped the church for hundreds of years to come. A few years back now, Time magazine, in a cover story on Martin Luther, declared that three men since the first century had changed the way that the world thinks. Jesus, Karl Marx, and Martin Luther. How everyone counts. Luther is one of the great figures of history and one of the great figures of faith. He has certainly had an impact on my faith. He has changed the way I think, feel, and see the world. We are justified before God by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It is a gift of God, not of our own doing. Gott sei Dank, mahalo nui loa, Thanks be to God. Amen.